So in this example, we are going to compute the convolution of two unit step functions. So let's let y of t equal u of t convolved with u of t, where u of t is the unit step function. The convolution symbol there really is just shorthand for the convolution integral. So we can actually write this as the convolution integral, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of u of tau, u of t minus tau d tau. So this is the integral that we need to evaluate if we want to be able to compute y of t. And this is just the definition of u of t convolved with u of t, the convolution integral. To be able to do the convolution integral, we need to know what the individual pieces of the integrand look like. So we need to know what u of tau looks like, and we need to know what u of t minus tau looks like. So let's just sketch each one of those individually. If we sketch u of tau, that's very easy. As a function of tau, the function u of tau turns on at time 0. So it's 0 for all negative tau, and it's equal to 1 for all positive tau. So this is the signal u of tau. What about the signal u of minus tau? Now u of minus tau is not a signal that we need for the integrand of our convolution integral, but it's kind of the first thing that you usually sketch when you're trying to sketch u of t minus tau. So let's go ahead and sketch u of minus tau. Here's our time axis tau, and we know that u of minus tau is just u of tau that's been flipped on the time axis. So it's a unit step that's on for all negative time and turns off at time zero. So this is u of minus tau. And I labeled here on the tau axis the time zero. When we sketch our next sketch, which will be for u of t minus tau, keeping track of where zero gets shifted to due to the shift t is kind of the easy way to work these problems. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's sketch this final piece, u of t minus tau. So this is the other part that we need for the convolution integ integral integrand, because we need to take the product u of tau times u of t minus tau. So we need to be able to sketch this signal. So what does u of t minus tau look like? It basically is just u of minus tau, the signal that we just sketched, but shifted by some amount t. So when I sketch this, I'm going to sketch it versus the time axis tau, because that's the time variable inside of the convolution integral. And what this signal is going to look like is it's going to look like my time-reversed unit step. It looks very much like u of minus tau. The difference is that it doesn't turn off at time zero. This signal has been shifted by an amount t, so it actually turns off at time t, whatever t is. So you'll notice when I've sketched this, I haven't labeled where the time origin tau equals zero is. Because right now t is just a variable. I don't know t if t is less than zero or if it's bigger than zero. So right now I really can't label where the time origin is on the tau axis because I haven't specified the value for t. So usually when I sketch the time reversed and shifted signal when I'm doing convolution integrals, I sketch it like this and I don't label the time origin. I just keep track of where t is. So in our original sketch of u of minus tau, I had a zero there on the axis. Now that I've shifted that signal, the zero has been shifted to time t. So I've labeled time t on this axis. So now we can actually go ahead and perform the integral, now that we know what the pieces of the integrand look like. So let's consider the two cases. The two cases here are obviously t less than zero and t greater than or equal to zero. For t less than zero, I can sketch what u of t minus tau looks like. So now that I've specified a value for t, I can actually draw u of t minus tau on the tau axis, and I can label where the time origin tau equals zero is. Since t is less than zero, this is a unit step that turns off before tau equals zero. So this is what u of t minus tau looks like here in blue. And then u of tau, we know what that looks like. We sketched that just a few minutes ago. We know what that looks like. So these are the two things that I need to multiply to get my convolution integral. So if I actually do that multiplication, we see that they don't have any non-zero overlap. They're actually zero. One of them is zero at all points time tau. So when I take their product, I actually get zero. So when I do the convolution integral, I'm actually integrating zero for all time, which obviously gives me zero. So this is, the, this is a very easy case. The other case is for time greater than or equal to zero. So again, let's sketch the time axis tau. Now that I've specified a region for t, I can actually sketch what u of t minus tau looks like. Since t is greater than or equal to zero in this case, I know this signal is going to turn off past tau equals zero. So that's the sketch that I've made here in blue. 
u of t minus tau turns off at time greater than tau equals zero. It turns off at time t, because that's, that's where it turns off at. It always turns off at time t. What about our other signal, u of tau? Well, u of tau looks just like it always does. It looks like this. Now we do have some overlap. When I take this product, u of tau times u of t minus tau, which is what I need to evaluate for my convolution integral, I get this signal. So you can see when I take the product, it's zero everywhere except for the region zero to t. And on that interval, it is equal to one. So now I can go ahead and do my convolution integral. If I integrate this product from minus infinity to infinity, it's zero everywhere except for times between zero and t. So I'm actually integrating one from zero to t, and that equals t. So let's combine these two cases. We had two cases, t less than zero and t greater than or equal to zero. So if I wanted to, I could write this convolution u of t convolved with u of t as this piecewise equation. For times less than zero, we get zero. And for times greater than or equal to zero, we have the quantity t. If I sketch this versus time, because that's what y of t is, it's a time signal as a function of the variable t, it looks like this. It's zero for all negative time, and then at time zero, it just linearly increases. It's a line. It's a ramp function. So this is a totally fine answer. We could leave it in this form. If we wanted to simplify it a little bit more, kind of a more compact expression, we see that we can actually write this convolution as t times u of t. So instead of writing explicitly a piecewise equation, we can use the unit step function to turn everything off for time less than zero, and then have it turn on at time zero, which results in the function t. So this is our final answer. Unit step, convolved with the unit step, is t times a unit step.